What's up guys? Hopefully you can hear me well. I'm recording off my camera. It doesn't pick up audio very well. Uh, my my webcam picks it picks up way better, but stupid iMovie 11, I've told you this before, it records it out of sync and it takes me forever to edit it and I really don't want to put this up late so I'm just gonna record it with my camera so that I can edit it faster. So I do apologize for the audio if it's a little low because I do tend to see that the audio does drop. So that's why, um, if you guys notice the difference, that's why. I'll try to talk louder. Welcome to Mass Effect Talks, episode 15. And today I'm going to talk about the Quarians. I got the idea from this person. A little thumbs up uh, for giving me this good idea because I hadn't thought about... I had thought about doing one about the Quarians, but not until later. And when I started to actually think about it, when this person asked me... They were like, why don't you do, are you going to do Mass Effect Talks? You should do it on like the Quarians or the Geth or something. And I was like, you know what, that sounds like a good idea. Because I think that's going to be a big part of Mass Effect 3, the Quarians and the Geth. So I'm going to talk about the, the Quarians today. I was going to talk about both, but there's so much information that it would just be super long. So I'm going to do the Quarians today and the Geth next Friday and then we'll talk about what's going on between both of them because I think it's important to know a lot about the Quarians because I think the Quarians out of all the races has have a huge amount of information when it comes to who they are as a race. I think the Quarians um, are, are just so fascinating to me so uh, I'm going to be talking about the Quarians and hopefully you guys learn something new because there are a lot of things that uh, I think a lot of you didn't know, and some of it comes from the novels, actually, or at least one novel, and I'll go into that, too. Um, so thank you to that person, uh, Mr. Keys 21 I think that's how you say it. Thank you for, get, for giving me that little refreshment of what I should do Mass Effect talks on today, so props to you. I am so thirsty. I'm going to go get a juice. It's the drink of the gods. I love it. I can't show the, the actual brand, but I'm pretty sure you guys know what that is. Um, and if you're wondering the, the flavor, it's strawberry. The best. The best. And I've tried them all. Oh, and it's nice and cold. Oh, get out of here. Anyways, so the Koreans come from the planet Renok. Renok is similar to Earth. Uh, and it's actually uh, it, what Renok means in a different language. It means garden planet or something like that. So uh, it must have a lot of gardens. And the cool thing about Renok is that there are no insects on Renok. I would be so happy on this planet. You have no idea how much I hate insects. And I know they're, you know, they're important and all that whatever and the way that the flowers and the plants have come about um po the po uh, pollinating and all that that it's actually through other animals like bigger animals so i was like why doesn't that happen here i mean you know like couldn't dogs pollinate flowers i like dogs it's also a lot more arid than earth um, and arid means that it's more, um, it's a little more dry. And th these two things, no insects and it being dry, is one of the reasons why Renok doesn't have that many infections. And the, yeah, the, the Koreans did, um, the, their immune system did go down, way down, when they were driven off their home world and they started to live on the flotillas because it was a, uh, like a sterile environment so their immune systems went down because they didn't have infections so their immune systems kind of was like okay well we don't we don't need to work so we'll just you know go chill out at the mall or something and it just left and their immune systems is like tiny but even when they were already living on the home world before the geth took over um they already had compromised immune systems and it was because of the environment um, no insects means less infections because insects carry uh, and transport infections. Also, it being so dry, 
infections can't really survive in dry in dry uh, climates. So that was another uh, uh, that was another problem. So the the Koreans have always been really weak when it comes to their, their to their immune system, even before they were driven off the, the home planet. So you can imagine how little their immune system must be now if it was already pretty bad. So why were they driven off the home planet? It was because of the Geth, right? The Koreans created the Geth, and I love I love to see the Geth and the Koreans together because they look they look alike. And it's like you could tell that the Koreans were the makers of the Geth, kind of representing the the, the Koreans in the way that they look. Mm -hmm. They have similar legs, their hand their hands, their faces almost look like the the, the Koreans with the little the little light right here. It, it looks a lot like the Geth. They created the, the Geth three hundred years before Mass Effect. Not, so this was a long, long time ago when they created them, and they created them for slave work. They don't like to. They don't like to call them slaves. They just call. They they just say you know we 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 created them for manual labor. Uh, you know things that we couldn't do. It was easier for the for a, a robot to do. But the the Koreans are so advanced in their technology that they 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 created this artificial intelligence, which in that time. Uh, they uh, the, not even the Turians had been able to create anything uh, like an AI. They had only been creating virtual intelligence, like VIs. They hadn't been able to get to that point to create uh, an artificial intelligence, intelligence like the, the Koreans did. And they didn't just stop there. That was the problem. They created the, the Geth, and they they constantly upgraded it. They constantly upgraded the Geth. And they made them even more, uh, even more uh, advanced. And that was when the Geths started to become sentient. So they started to become like they had it. To, they started to think for themselves and actually question. And that was uh, they had always questioned the Koreans if they had a soul. But un not until way later, once they were more advanced. Did, did the Koreans actually start getting worried, like it scared them, the way that the guests started to question that same question that they had been a uh, questioning, but now it seemed like more serious, like it was like they were actually questioning if they were, if they were alive. That was when they started to go, you know what, this is a bad idea, this is not going well, let's just terminate them. And in the, when they were going to terminate them, the Geth defended themselves. They were like, oh hell no. And they just attacked the Koreans and they were, uh, the Koreans kind of underestimated the power that the Geth had and uh, they uh, they were so powerful. They killed billions of Koreans and took over Rannoch. They actually like exiled the Koreans. The Koreans just had to run off the planet because they were all gonna die if they had stayed there. So they were just too strong for the Koreans to handle. <clears throat> which is crazy to imagine. It's like, w wow, you know, how many Geth were there when they created them, and how many Koreans were there? I mean, for the for the Geth to drive them out, uh, the Koreans have never been a fighting race, um, which is probably what happened um, mostly because they were probably uh, too weak for the Geth. So that's where the flotilla started. And the flotilla is all of the Korean ships. They they actually ha they live they have to live in space, and the flotilla is the whole unit. All of all of the ships together uh, of the Koreans. That's the flotilla, or the Korean fleet. And the the flotilla is actually pretty big. The migrant fleet actually consists of 50,000 starships that have 17 million Quarians in, in, in total. So I was reading that the fleet is so big that it could take days for all of them to go through a mass, mass, through a mass relay. So for them to actually go from one mass relay to another it takes days for them to get there, all of them. So once they were kicked out by the Geth, they actually did ask for help from the Citadel right away. They, were, they asked for help. And the Citadel turned them down, and they actually punished them. They took their embassy on the Citadel off. They like completely just disappeared it, and it, they, it was because they said it was their fault 
because they made the Geth and they uh, basically put the Geth out in in the galaxy, um, and you know they're a huge threat. So they 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 blame the Quarians and they just completely isolated them from Citadel space. Like they, they that and that's why um, a lot of species don't like the Quarians. They, they 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 don't forget that. They're like they're the ones who who made the whole Geth problem. Um, and they, they don't like the, the, the Koreans for a lot of reasons. They don't like the Koreans because of the Geth. They see them like scavengers. They see them like thieves. Because the Koreans really need everything they could get. They try to be as honest as they can. Um, but whatever isn't used or isn't needed, they obviously will take it because they need all the resources they could get. So a lot of species see them, see them as scavengers. Also, the flotilla obviously carries waste of all kinds, and when you sometimes when they're flying over uh, atmospheres or planets, they'll just dump their their waste like wherever. And all ships do that; they'll just dump their waste in, in space. But you can't compare it a ship or a few ships doing that every now and then, sporadically. And, and compare, and you can't compare that to a whole entire flotilla doing it. But also, it's called strip mine systems. They'll they'll mine planets for resources or moons. They'll they'll mine them as much as they can. And the people that are already living on those planets that that they hate that. They're like, what the hell? Is this our stuff? This is our resources? And you guys just come and take it from us? So that's another reason they're 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 looked down upon. And another thing that kind of does suck: any criminals that they'll have, or any any Koreans that they exile, like Tally was talking about in Mass Effect Two. Um, mostly the criminals, they'll just drop them because they, they they really have no nowhere in the flotilla, and also they don't have the resources to keep prisoners. So what they do is they just drop their criminals in some planet, random planet. They just buy and then they take off. And the planet has to deal with that criminal. So the Quarians are looked down upon for a lot of reasons. And that's why in Mass Effect 2 you really get to see that um, on the Citadel, in Ilium. Like on the Citadel, that one Volus was, was um, accusing that one Quarian for stealing his credit chit and it had fallen off. And for no reason, just because she was a Quarian, he was, he was accusing her. Um, and that's that's why because they they just have a bad reputation. But they are very useful. Um, as much as a lot of species don't like the Koreans, they do use them for a lot of things. Mostly because of their technical and their engineering skills. They're they're one of the most advanced races when it comes to engineering and and technology. So sometimes. Uh, certain species will employ Quarians, but almost like under the table. Like they don't want anybody to know that they're working with a Quarian. And they'll use them to like fix sh their ships or something because um, sometimes something that is considered garbage because you can't fix it anymore, um, Quarians will end up fixing it. So life on the flotilla is not very comfortable. I don't want to say that the Quarians are miserable. They're not. They're actually very they're uh, an optimistic race, but especially for their conditions. Um, on the flotilla, they're very packed. Every ship is packed. And not in, j for a few reasons. One of the reasons is because, you know, they have limited space. But also because the more the more core the more members on in a in a ship is the higher the higher the status of that ship. So it's like 